set the record straight about that, in that the issue is not the American people or the country, it is that there are certain lawless elements in government that exist in the United States who, in their cloak of secrecy, have done things which 10 years ago we were ridiculed for talking about building protections against. And five years ago, when those things were used for certain ends, people still thought it was pretty crazy. And when I gave a talk at 29C3 uh, last December in Hamburg, and I said that the head of the NSA was lying, and I said that they were wiretapping Americans and they were wiretapping the rest of the world, people still at that point denied that this was possible. They still suggested that this was tinfoil hattery and so on. And this is both to deny the facts that have been laid before the European Union, such as Duncan Campbell's interception report to the European Union of 2001, I think, and it's also to deny a lot of the things that we see, the fruits of these surveillance programs sort of coming to bear, right? Like the notion of a signature strike. Right? What is a signature strike? It is metadata that is often gleaned from surveillance that is used for political assassination, right? Without a judge, without a jury, and so on. And so just seven months ago, people really were, I think, still in denial. And so the big thing that has happened is not that we have learned that America is the devil or something like this, but actually a few people in the United States have taken a Faustian pact, betrayed the democracy that does exist to some degree in the United States still, and under that cloak of secrecy they have done things which are highly illegal, and they have encouraged similar people in similar positions in the German government, for example, as we know from last week's Der Spiegel article, to do the same thing. That doesn't mean that you guys are bad, except for the BND guys in the audience. <laughs> Probably not even individually, but, but the point is that these, these systems that exist, those systems have some people. Most of those people are actually quite good people, and America as a country itself, I don't think of it as a bad place, but I also don't think of it as a safe place for myself, my friends, and people that I really care about in certain contexts. And the German word that explains it the best for me is Zersetzung, which I'm sure I just pronounced incorrectly, but those of you that are hosties probably realize what this word is, and you know it quite well. And that is a, a current state of affairs in the United States for some political activists, or people who don't consider themselves to be political activists, but are targeted as terrorists because of the things that they say, that they think, that they believe, that they do with their computers. And so that's very complicated, and we should not just blanket dismiss the complication and sum it up as America as a bad place, because I feel like Roger and I give America a good name. This is a really interesting conversation to be having here. So Jake mentioned 10 years ago this, five years ago that. So four years ago, I was at a Dutch hacker conference. I think it was Har Hacking in Redden. And I was on a panel where we were talking about freedom and freedom from surveillance and, and censorship and so on. And one of the points that I, I found really hard to drive home to the audience Everybody was saying, Iran is bad because they censor and they surveil. Syria is bad because they censor and surveil. I'm so glad I live in a good country. I'm so glad I live in the West where we don't do that. And part of the, the hardest message to give them there was, actually, you can't divide things into those countries that censor and surveil and those Western countries that are free and provide freedom. You have to, you can't sit back and say, good thing I'm in Germany where they wouldn't do that to you have to start fighting for freedom all around the world. You can't divide it into, I'm glad I, I don't live in over there, Stan. Good thing I'm free here. And, and here we are now trying to, to draw the lines between certain Western countries. You can't, there, there's no bucket A free, bucket B non-free. We need all around the world to have these technologies and policies and cultural approaches uh, that can maintain freedom everywhere. Yeah, and I mean, 